Brand new album by Katy Perry. 33 minutes long. It's called 143. The singles have not been good. Okay? The singles have been bad, I might say. And a lot of them produced by Dr. Luke. Bad look in general. But there's some interesting features on here. Uh, there's Dochi, there's uh, JID21 Savage, Kim Petrus. Those are the four features on here. So uh, let's see if this is the worst album of the year. People are saying that this might be the worst album of the year even before hearing it, just ba just based off of the singles. We'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm coming into it with open ears. I'm not coming here to just hate. Let's just say my expectations are kind of, uh, they're low. They, they're on the floor. We're, we're rock bottom with Woman's World here, especially lyrically. As always, the full unedited VOD of this stream, if you miss it live, is on my Patreon. Let's just get into this Katy Perry record. I don't know what to expect here. I, it's either gonna be really boring or laughably bad, I think, but again, I'm coming in with open ears. This is just the most pandering shit ever. I mean, it's just the, the irony of being on a song produced by Dr. Luke and like making like a feminist pop anthem like this. It's like, what are we doing, Katie? Do you not even recognize that irony? The music video did look like she just watched Barbie and was like, oh, let me try this. And the, the vibe of the song is similar to some of the stuff of the, of the Barbie soundtrack. It's a woman's world. Really basic disco inspired instrumental. The lyrics like literally could not be more surface level feminism. It's a mess. It's one of the worst songs of the year, I think. Um, maybe not like instrumentally. I think instrumentally it's just boring, but like the lyrics are just so egregiously bad. I, I can't, I can't get over it. Let's go into a new song with a 21 Savage verse on it. I'm like Amazon, cause I got what you need. 21. She gave me her heart, so I gave her my keys. 21. She said kitty kitty. Chippy chippy daddy, take me on a ride. If you want my body, gotta blow my mind. You gotta stimulate her intellectually, you just have to. Five stars whenever we eat. Yeah, all I know is this feeling is deep. If you give me your heart, it's for keep. I mean, yeah, that was a 21 Savatars. It doesn't sound like he wants to be here though. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't sound like Savage wants to be there at all. This is a reoccurring thing, I think, in Katy Perry's career, and this was very common in the 2010s, is that um, a lot of the time there was like, there was a big era in pop music where it was just like, we need to force a rap verse on here. And I feel like every single time Katy did have a song with a rap verse on it, she didn't really like, bend at all towards whatever the feature artist's sound was or what they'd be comfortable on and she just kind of was like all right we'll throw a trap snare in there and then you know like maybe they'll you know feel comfortable rapping on this beat like there was she didn't she's like historically never bent at all and just been like oh here's a Katy perry song Let's throw a Juicy J verse yes! on here. Let's throw a 21 Savage verse on here for no reason. It just, you know, it, let's throw a Migos verse on here. Like they, I, there are very few rap verses on a Katy Perry song where uh, the rapper feels comfortable on it. The lyrics are silly. I feel like the lyrics are gonna continuously be silly. There's words like kitty and daddy. Uh, if you want my body, you gotta blow my mind. <laughs> We're in for something for sure. Kim Petra's feature on this one, gorgeous. I like Snoop on California Girls. That's a good example, actually. Yo, the squeaking in this instrumental is a choice. I feel like Kim might slide on this though, actually. This chorus is a mess. This chorus is so clunky. Kim Petra's verse, I'd assume. I was wrong. This got rough in a hurry. Don't want a cup, pass me the shoddy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to pick up on something here, which is that I don't think the feature artists are taking this album seriously. I think they, I think they got a check. I think they were like, sure, sign me up. But I, I refuse to put any effort into this. That got really rough in a hurry. The, the beat was so squeaky, which was a weird choice and not even in like a Jersey club way. It was just less like high pitched, irritating synth. Uh, again, like the lyrics are, uh, 
you know, leaving a lot to be desired here, especially Kim Petras' verse, man. That was tough. I said I wasn't coming here to hate, but like, this is, it's not giving me much room to work with here. Dochi. You know what? Happy Doji's getting paid, though. That's cool. Wait, what's this sample? This sounds like, um, Wee Lobby music. Oh, it's just... Okay, I like the Dochi part. I wouldn't say she saved the song, but I liked the Dochi verse. Does anyone else feel like they should have just picked up the tempo on this? It feels like it's on, like, Nyquil. Like, the beat feels sleepy. Are, are, we, are we in for it? I don't think there was, like, super egregious stuff on here besides, like, the chorus is, like, whatever. I'm his queen, I'm his freak. I don't know, man. I feel like if I keep pointing out these lines, I feel like this is just going to be a recurring theme. And it's not like Katy Perry's ever had great lyrics, but the melodies have been stronger than this. And the instrumentals have been stronger than this in the past, so... This cannot... If that's the chorus, I am... I do not want to hear the lobby EDs. I don't want to hear them anymore. No, it's back. This melody's back. This is tough. Are you guys hearing these lyrics? Yeah, I got those palpitations. Those boom, boom, boom. I'm on a... Did fucking... Big Justice write this verse? That's my least favorite so far, I think. Th those verses are like, oh my god, lyrically, she is saying nothing. Like, this is like, did she just decide to write her own album this time around? Did, did Katy Perry, like, take up lyricism or, like, writing songs? No. There's, okay, sorry, 13 writers. 13 writers. 13. 13. 13 writers which you know like the way writing credits work is that you can like just get a credit for you know like working on the beat a little bit it, it like depends on like the negotiation but like the point being is that this went through a lot of filters this song and this album went through a lot of filters a lot of people worked on this and nobody said maybe we should change the lyrics of uh yeah i get those palpitations those boom boom booms I'm on a new vibration. I need some medication. This went through 13 different people and that made it to the final cut. La -de 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 -de. Let's keep that. Let's keep that. Oh my God. Oh, let's keep moving. I don't take the joy in shitting on this stuff. Like I would rather not shit on music and it like not make the content than I, I would rather just listen to an exclusively good album. But I have to listen to this because it's my job. I'm trying to have fun with it, but I'm mad. How could you be this deep in your career? How could you make teenage dream? And like, it, there's this. And then, now, now we're left with this. Are they going to allow her back on American Idol after this? Who is going to take tips from her? We have Jesse Ware at home. Jesse Ware at home. Weirdly, I think that was like my favorite single. And I did not like it. I mean, like, honestly, like, the best that she has working for her right now is just regular boring. Like, I'll take regular boring over laughably bad. And, like, I feel like Lifetimes is just regular boring. I feel like maybe someone like Dua Lipa could have done a good job with this instrumental, but the instrumental itself is still boring as well, so. Regular boring is better than annoying and boring? Exactly. Most listenable track so far. Overproduced? Everything on this album is going to be overproduced. Let's accept that now. Okay, this is this is just an EDM song. And not like a horrible EDM song. I feel like this would be complete with a Macklemore feature. Like it feels of that era. Yes, this is listenable. This is like, this is the best song. Like I'll, I'll take this like a uh, run of the mill 2010s EDM song. Basic lyrics, but nothing is like making me, like making my skin crawl, you know? Very cold play exchange smokers, exactly. Disappointing Swedish House Mafia, exactly. It's so mid, yes, I'll take mid. I will take mid. Give me mid for the rest of the album. That that is like something Calvin Harris probably like wiped his ass with in like 2011. 
but I will take that. We're taking we're taking the wins as they come, guys. It's few and far between. 24 hour fitness soundtrack type beat. I love how much he's just like saying words on this album. <laughs> We're not trying to get anything across. Take a ride on my rainbow. Take a ride on a rainbow. These sound like lyrics like BB Rexa would cook up for a David Guetta song, you know? Listen, we, we have three songs left to go. A lot of people are saying, and a lot of people are like, oh, Camila Cabello is dropped like the worst pop album of this year, at least in the mainstream, like, and nobody's going to surpass it. Um, I think at least Camila was trying to do newer stuff. Like, it was it groundbreaking? No. Was it like based off of what other artists have been doing? Yes. But at least she was attempting to do something fresh, or at least something attempting to do something that is at least a little bit cutting edge, you know, even if she didn't always stick the landing, even if it felt like she was mimicking some other artists. This, like, at the very base level, even if the lyrics were really strong and the melodies were really good, this entire project is so dated. It is so, like, not necessarily her sound, but this is what artists were doing. Like, you know, this is the music that was playing in your local 24-hour fitness 10 years ago. So just, like, at a, as a starting place, it, it was already doomed for failure. Because this sound sounds dated for a reason. It's because nobody really kept doing shit like this besides like uh, David Guetta, you know, or like, you know, a a Ava Max, I guess, is doing something like adjacent to this. Kind of shot herself in the foot immediately. And regardless of what Dr. Luke has done in the past, he's not cooking. All right, Jid. J.I.D. verse. What the fuck was going on in that verse? <laughs> this kind of, this has like, like Dark Horse E.T. energy, you know what I mean? But like, at Wish. Trapped in a maze, are we lost in the matrix? Animalistic instincts, it's all nature behind enemy lines of animation. Scribbled upon a page, we stuck in assimilation. Getting closer, I'm closing my eyelids. But when it's over, my head to the sky, and I realize everybody will. Dude, J.A.D. doesn't even have ass a verse on a Katy Perry song? He kind of cooked on that verse. What? Uh, I, I just, I, I hated that instrumental. Did anyone else hate that instrumental as much as I did? Like, I, I think that the only thing worse than like 2010's EDM is like 2010's dark pop. Ooh, like, oh, this like sinister vibe. I'm a villain. I'm a bad girl. Like, that's what that instrumental says. And then we like, what? What was that first verse? Are you gonna love me like a human? Can you touch me in a simulation? All right, let's keep moving. Two more songs left. We would eat this up in 2010. But the thing is, it's like, it's not 2010 anymore. And also, would we? Katy Perry was already kind of on the downfall after Teenage Dream, right after that album came out. And songs like E.T. and Dark Horse were massive tracks that kind of had a similar sort of like dark uh, EDM fused like trap energy like a lot of the songs do here. Is anyone going to argue that any of those these songs are as good as Dark Horse? So the argument that we'd be eating this up if it came out around a similar time, I don't think that that's true. Like, this is obviously a far worse version of that. Yeah, Dark Horse sounds a little dated too, because it was of a very specific era, but like, there's an infectious melody to it. The beat is a lot better. One of the least egregious tracks, I think. Like, I, I don't want to throw my headphones. Okay, that one wasn't like that bad. That was just like regular boring. Um, 2020's Coldplay, is that you? <laughs> this is the most Coldplay shit I've ever heard in my life! Is this gonna have a BTS feature? This sounds like it was made for YouTube Rewind in, like, 2013. It's for her daughter? She did her daughter dirty! <laughs> <laughs> you know how I said before the album started 
that this would either be unbelievably bland or laughably bad. Somehow it ended up being both. You need to have one of these things, okay? Because I know people will bring up, oh, like there's a lot of songs that you like, Will, that, you know, have stupid lyrics that clearly aren't trying very hard, right? Those songs that I like, the instrumentals are in usually incredible. There has to be something going on either melodically or instrumentally that lets you get away with not trying very hard in the lyricism, you know, especially in stuff like electronic music. But I think when the instrumentals are this boring, like they are on this album, you have to focus on something. So you listen to the lyrics and then you hear what you're saying in the lyrics and it's worse than the instrumental. There just isn't anything going on. She's giving us nothing to grab onto. There's, there's nothing there. It is emptiness she either isn't trying at all or she's trying way too hard to do something that like a feminist anthem or a bad girl song it just feels so transparent and i think it's unfortunately it's really easy to tell that she's been out of the game for a while that she has not been making music katie's career has been going downhill for a while now she hasn't released a good album in years and I must mention, I like Teenage Dream. I think Teenage Dream is like a classic pop record. You know, there are so many bangers off of that album. But like what she decided to do here, which was like not necessarily um, replicate the sound of Teenage Dream or anything like that, but she is doing trends from around that era musically. Like this is not, there's nothing fresh about this. There's nothing interesting about this. And like, there are some choices on here lyrically and melodically that are just downright cringe. I'm not saying every track is that bad. There's some passably just regular boring stuff, but like, this is a absolute fumble of a return, an absolute mess. And you know, what's funny is that we don't have to feel bad for her because she decided to work with a known, you know what, on the, throughout almost this entire album. So I don't even feel bad for her. I don't even feel bad for her trying to make this like big comeback and then just absolutely fumbling it. That's the best part. I don't care. And we don't have to care. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, that is That was really bad. If you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe and all of that stuff. Um, but that's it for us and Katy Perry uh, for this Katy Perry record. I really hated that. Um, I Probably the worst pop album of the year.